one of the big things that companies are doing is a lot of investment into renewables. You know, wind and solar, as you know, um, sort of variable natural resources. Um, you know, you're not going to get sun for the whole day, so it's variable over the course of the day. They're also investing in things like nuclear um, in order to sort of flatten out sort of the curve of, of how much energy is produced each day. Um, apart from renewables, they're also investing in sort of modernizing their grid infrastructure um, so that it's more efficient, investing in energy efficiency programs for, for some of their customers, um, and also doing sort of distributed energy. Um, so essentially looking at solar panels on, on let's say, people's roofs, um, also looking at energy storage and maybe people's backyards. Um, so just a very wide variety of things that are going on in the utility space. In energy, I think it was uh, most interesting for me to start to see trends emerge across certain companies. So for example, European energy companies tend to behave in a certain way and American energy companies tend to behave in a certain way. Namely, European energy companies are doing much more to become integrated energy companies investing in wind and solar, whereas American energy companies seem to be sort of doubling down on their core offerings and supplementing those with carbon capture, hydrogen technologies. Yeah. Um, so it was cool to sort of start to see that texture emerge in, in the research and see those divergent trends. Over the course of the, the findings, it looked a lot at you know things that might not be renewables related that are actually super important in terms of you know reaching net zero. So for example, when you have natural gas pipelines, there, there's methane emissions that occur. Um, so those are a big part of, of sort of net zero emissions uh, for a lot of these companies. I think another big thing is also the importance of the grid. And, and we've done projects with Capgemini in the past. Uh, I've talked to prior consultants. Um, a lot of research has been done into smart grids and how you can increase the efficiency of the electrical grid. So I think it was definitely surprising for me to learn that, you know, what is put out there in terms of PR is, is a lot of renewables, but what's actually working is, you know, building out that transmission capacity, um, especially for a lot of these renewables. In this case, for me, I think what was most surprising was understanding scope three emissions, scope one and two emissions being the emissions that are produced by the company and used by the company um, in the act of creating, say, oil and gas. Um, but then scope three emissions being these, the you know, end, end product emissions. And realizing that scope three emissions are over 85% of emissions that these companies are releasing and how that is kind of the wild, wild west in the world of legislation and regulation and reporting. A lot of companies don't report scope three emissions um, and there's increasing pressure for them to do so. So this relationship between scope one and scope two and also scope three and navigating the future of scope three I think will be really interesting.